Hi! Today we're going to talk about that certain circumstance when you're buying inventory items and the unit of measure that you're buying doesn't evenly distribute. I'll show you what I mean. I've added this new inventory item called Luna Soda. And if we take a look at the unit of measure, you can see I can buy and sell in a can, a six pack, which would be six cans, a 12 pack, which would be 12 cans, or a case, which is 24 cans. You'll also notice that in this particular circumstance, I'm going to track lot numbers so we can get a better feel for the cost that'll occur. So let's look at what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase and receive some of these Luna sodas at a special price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order by the case, which we know is 24 cans. And I'm going to purchase this case for $15.99. And if we take a look and average that out, we can see that the cost per can is .66625. And if we go back and look at our inventory item number, we can actually see that our price schedules, our currency decimals, go to item currency, only extends to two places. So what are we going to do with that extra 625? So there's going to be some extra discrepancies that won't evenly uh, divide among all the individual inventory items. So let's take a look at that now. So I'm going to go to purchasing and I'm going to go to purchase order and I'll create a purchase order first of all for my Luna sodas. And Let's look up Luna Soda. There it is. I'm going to order by the case. That's my default. I'm going to order one case at $15.99. Actually, let's pick 100 cases at $15.99. Okay, great. And I'm going to receive them into the warehouse. So I'm going to click Save, pull that PO back up, and I'm going to receive the invoice and the PO items. So I'll pull it up and I'll click on receive. And now it's asking me for a lot number. So I'm going to put them all in lot number A41217 and insert. So I've put all of my quantity because I ordered 100 cases and there's 24 cans a case, that's 2400 cans, I've assigned them all to the exact same lot number. And I'll click OK and I'm going to post this. Forgot my invoice number. So we'll just say it's invoice 11 and I'll post. Let's close out the PO window. I'll cancel my reports and go back to our inventory item. Let's go back to item and look up our Luna sodas. Now, I'm going to go to Quantities and Sites and let's take a look. You can see we have 24 on hand. And if we look, we can see they're all in the warehouse. So that's great. Let's close that out and under Inquiry, let's go to uh, Lots. We want to track it by item number first. So we'll look here and here's what we can see that's happened. We have two entries using the exact same lot number and they have different costs associated with them. The first item for all but one item, 2,399 cans, calculated at the point six six, And one can calculated a cost at 1566. So let's talk about why this happened. So we're looking at this rounding difference and we can see this percentage here. So what ended up happening is we had 23 items that had a cost of 66 cents, which averages to 15.18. And then we had one can, oops, that was 23.99, sorry. Then we had one can that had a cost of 15.99, I think that was right, 15.66, sorry, 15.66, and it averages for 1566 and we can take and add the two together and they total the 1599 of the original order now why did this happen 
Great Plains doesn't know how to deal with the rounding, so it has to choose one method um, as to deal with the rounding. So it's it's creating the best method for you. Essentially, what's going to happen here is when you sell, depending on your valuation method, when you sell this one can, your cost will be fifteen dollars and sixty six cents. And when you sell these twenty three hundred and ninety nine cans, your cost will be sixty six cents. It's the only way the system can average it out. Now, if you want, you can go through and do a utility adjustment to change the cost. So I'm going to go into co adjust cost under utilities and pull it up. And I'll pull up my warehouse site. And I can go in and change this cost to 0.66. Okay, so now it's time for you to decide how you want to handle it. Either using this inventory adjustment cost so that all the cost of your items are exactly the same thing, which this would create the general ledger journal entry for you to go ahead and make an inventory cost adjustment, or whether you keep one item out there at a very high cost. So when you sell it, you're probably going to um, show that you've made virtually no profit on it because the cost will be significantly higher. Those choices are yours. My recommendation for you is that you evaluate what percent it is of your total inventory cost and you make one decision and you be consistent all the way through your processes. So that's something for you to decide. I hope this gives you a little more insight and as always I hope it helps.